My name is Marilyn Fowler and I am a DJ at KPOO Radio. Please describe your ties to the Western Edition community. Well, uh, first off, I was born in San Francisco, um, started out in, on Schrader Street, but uh, my tie is the radio station, which is at 1329 Divisadero, which is just around the corner, practically. Can you tell me more about your experience growing up in San Francisco? Well, when I was little, we lived in the Haight, and that's when there were, um, it was during the 60s, and we lived there until I was six-year-old, until and I'm quoting my mother exactly, those damned hippies moved in, which is, always makes me laugh. But um, yeah, so that's my time growing up. I went to Grattan when I was little, and then when I graduated from UC Berkeley, I moved back to San Francisco, and I've lived here ever since. And how did you get into working at KPOO? It was by accident. The company that I was working for uh, the owner of the company was a gambler, and so the manager of the company decided to shut it down before the gambler ran the company into the ground. So suddenly I had this free time and I had some savings. A friend of mine said, hey, you should go volunteer at KPO. And I said, what's that? And um, I listened to a program, and it was Peppermint Patty, and it was at the time that the guy had injected cocaine into his, and it fell off, and then she played Patsy Cline's I Fall to Pieces, and I was like, oh, that's a special kind of wrong. Yeah, I want to go do that. And so I called up, and I went in, and the station manager said, well, the DJ's here. Well, he can show you how to queue up records. And I said, okay. And then he did. It took about 15 minutes. And he said, well, why don't you get some records and practice in the other room? And so I did. And then he said, well, the DJ's leaving. Why don't you go on the air? And I was like, what? And I went on, and um, the Board of Supervisors meeting was that day. And they told me, oh, they hardly ever go into closed session. Uh, they hardly ever end early. They did both. And so, and then the next DJ was an hour late, so I was on from 1.20 until 6 o'clock, and it was the most fabulous thing, and so. Do you remember that first radio show? Oh, yeah, because it, I was, I had had a bad weekend. I had auditioned to be a dancer, and I thought I just tanked it, and then uh, it, just, it was just a bad weekend, so it suddenly turned around. Like, I was so excited that when I left, I was calling my friends and no one was home, and the bus wasn't moving fast enough, so I had to get off the bus, and I ran, and I couldn't find any of my friends, so I finally just got an ice cream. But it was, I was just so excited. And then when I got home, it turned out that I actually got the, you know, became a dancer, so. Talk about a whirlwind. I know. <laughs> Have you always been a performer? Uh, not really. I mean, I always liked drama, but uh, the performing actually came, like everything changed in 1988. I went from, you know, kind of being in the, you know, doing clerical work in an office to doing radio and dancing, and I was a member of two dance troupes, and. Yeah, I just sort of fell in. Everything I've done, I've fallen into. So when you said you went to UC Berkeley, mm -hmm. uh, you didn't major in theater or dance or anything no, like that? No, no. I, I took a drama class, and I met a really good friend there. But no, I was focused on different things. When, like, when I first went in, I wanted to speak all the languages, but all of the finals for all the languages were on the exact same day at the exact same times, and I didn't know at the time that you could move finals around, so I was like, well, okay, let's figure out something else. And so you fell into dancing and mm -hmm. radio. I did. And how has that been? Uh, well, I love it. There's no money in it at all. <laughs> Because uh, the radio station is, um, every, all the DJs who are there are volunteer. Basically, everyone is volunteer. So people, the fact that it's been on for so long and it's so, uh, uh, so 
consistent is really a testament to people in the community who are willing to give their time and their effort to keep That's it going. That's commitment yeah. and a labor of love. Yeah, there are people who've been there from the get-go, been there since the 70s or, you know, in the, I've been there since 88, so, you know, people really love it. Have you ever missed a show? Of course. I'm not perfect at all. I'm not perfect at all. Um, but um, I've never... I've never missed a show where there wasn't like like it wasn't like I didn't show up. It was more like I knew I wasn't going to be there, so I would plan a show in advance, or I'd give them enough time so they they could because there's always someone who wants to be on the radio, so it's never a problem. It's preemptive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You like like when I prepare a show, it's actually someone not getting to go on the air. So, and I know since it's a community run and community run radio for the community. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've met a lot of cool people from the community through uh, it. I've been really lucky. I've met a ton of people. Um, I have the librarians on the last uh, Monday of every month because I have loved the li I've loved libraries since I was a kid. And um, but I've met. Uh, I, I talked to one of the. One of the uh, people who worked at NASA uh, to get uh, the uh, was it rover the, 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 to the the, Mar the Mars probe. I spoke to him the morning after they got it, uh, so that was exciting. I've spoken to um, local uh, impresarios, uh, lots of drag personalities. Eddie Muller, who does the the noir festival, Anita Manga does the silent film festival. Uh, the um, people from the uh, the African American Shakespeare Company, uh, Brava Theater. I've just been really lucky. It, I, it's, 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 I have just like I have a blue show, and then I have an interview show, and I've been really lucky that people want to come to KPO and talk about their stuff. How do you find your interviewees? Do they do you seek them out, or do they come to you, or how does it work? It's a combination. When I first started doing it. Um, it really was, for me it was, oh, uh, there was a DJ who was on after me and he needed to take some time off. And I said, oh, well, I'll just have this show and it'll be like a placeholder till he comes back. But then he moved to be closer to his children. So I was like, oh, I guess I'm doing this. So um, what I first did, uh, I, I have a lot of friends who are performers, so I'd ask them and I would get emails from people who wanted to come and talk about their stuff, so i do that. And it just sort of grew, so I'll be walking down the street and I'll see a poster and I'll think, oh, that looks interesting, let me write that down. Or I'll be talking to someone and they'll say, oh, I'm doing this thing, and I'll go, oh, do you want to come on the show? But now I get an overwhelming number of emails, hey, you know, can this person be on, can that person be on, can we talk about this, can we talk about that? So um, the emails are a little bit daunting because it's, as you, you, you know, in the library, there's just so many, but um, I, I haven't had difficulty finding people at all. No shortage of material. <laughs> no, no, there's always somebody in the Bay Area who's either performing or writing a book or doing science or because I have the the Wonderfest people on and they come on and they talk about their I have my I call it scintillating science Monday so that's the first Monday of the month but um, yeah there's always there's there's so much going on in the city I wish I could accommodate everyone and it's really hard to to not be able to so you said you've been doing this since 1988. Yeah. I'm sure you've seen a lot of changes that have, you know, gone through the city, the community. Can yeah. you tell me more about that? Well, we've gone through several um, housing, uh, I'm going to call them catastrophes, where, like, even in the best of times, when I was a college student, uh, UC Berkeley had a a one like a one percent vacancy rate, and that was in the eighties. And 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 college was actually even affordable then, so I was able to graduate without debt. 
So what I see happening now is um, when I was younger, if I didn't like where I lived, I could just move to a different part of the city. So I've lived in, lived in a number of wow. different parts. Nowadays, if you, um, if you need to move, you're done. There's no way most people can afford to live in San Francisco. I'm lucky because I got a, when the bubble burst from the 2001.com, housing prices sort of dropped and I was able to get in. Also, uh, friends helped me get in. But I've had so many friends who've had to move and they moved to uh, Oakland and, and, and they're getting priced out there because they don't have as robust a, a um, uh, rent control as we have here. So that's really daunting. I've also seen sort of an explosion of homelessness and a really sort of profound drug addiction. Uh, it's almost Dickensian in a way, just how down and out people are, and that's uh, concerning to me. I want that. At the same time, I've seen a, a burgeoning of, of theater, and I've seen how um, I've seen how the uh, the gay rights movement has it's moved from uh, from activism, like strident activism to a very matter of fact, like, oh yeah, we're gay, no, no big deal. You know, and so you, you see the, uh, the, trans, the transformation of society from one that's not as tolerant to one that's very tolerant of diversity. And that is, that makes me happy. And that children are more sort of like, oh yeah, like, like gay isn't, a big deal. Right. That makes me happy. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's a mixed bag. You know, change is change. I love that you mentioned both the positive and yeah. the negative. Um, I guess that brings me to my last question. Of okay. What are your hopes and dreams for, you know, for the years to come for both the community of Western Edition and the city as a whole, and maybe even the world? <laughs> My hope is that we find a way to deal with homelessness and people who have profound mental health issues uh, in a way that's compassionate. Um, and because when someone is suffering on the streets, you are not separate from it. it, it I just feel like there's such a, a narrow, um, like, I think of it as there but for the grace of God go I. It would just take one tiny little tweak in my circumstances for it to be me or you or anybody. So I would like that. I would like housing to be more affordable in the city. I would like um, the arts to flourish, to continue to flourish. And I like for I do like San Francisco's freak flag and I want it to continue to to fly with all its um, majesty and splendor. So it sounds like you'll probably be staying in the city for long term. Well, it's my birthplace. I, I don't want to leave ever. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you.